everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing another book review. Um, this is going to be like, I think May and June together, maybe some of April. And then this might be the last one for a little bit as I'm going to go focus back on writing again. I don't have any more oh, arts waiting for me and unless I pick an ebook to read from my library, I don't have any more of those either. So I should full dive back into writing, but today I love that this is Pride Month and I have so many Pride books on my list. So to start was The Charm Offensive by Allison Cochran, that guy. Um, this was really cute. So we had just, you know, read What If This Gets Out about the two guys in a boy band and now this is like a bachelor style show and um, the main character doesn't like anybody but he's doing this um, PR stunt basically to go on the show and his handler is a gay guy and um, the main guy realizes like hey maybe I do actually like someone but maybe it's only this one guy and um, their relationship, their secrecy, all of that was really fun. I think a few side characters could have been developed more. They were kind of just there when the main characters needed them. But um, overall, I really enjoyed reading this book, especially for the whole, like, famous, like, uh, having to hide stuff. I just, I like that tension. <laughs> um, and then next, I wrote, read The Shoddy Setup by Lily Vale. And this one was really cute. Um, I think... I think it's exes yeah it was exes to lovers and they were like best friends and their relationship in them as people I was just in love like I could read about their life all day long <laughs> um, the world building is really good Lily is great about writing food into her books and um, the main girl character is into interior design and like fixing things up and refurbishing things and that was really fun to read about as well and then they work on this house together to sell and so there's that tension of them working closely together while figuring out like their hatred maybe not hatred feelings for each other and another great trope that I love that was a really fun read as well Next I read You Have a Match. This was not an art copy. This was from Emma Lord and it's about, she said it was like the parent trap. It's about two sisters who didn't know they existed meeting at camp and well actually no they met before then <laughs> and then one of the sisters decided to go to camp where her other sister worked and they had to figure out like what happened in their past. Their parents had never talked about it um, and I was really hoping for like a good reason towards the end and it was it was good. I don't, I, yeah, it ended well um, with everyone seeing everyone, but um, yeah, and then of course there's boy love interest stuff going on and just um, figuring out, you know, a new family member, a new sister, and, and navigating their parents' drama and all of that stuff, but it was a really good read as well. I'm like so excited. I, this whole month has been pretty much good reads because next I read another arc and then another queer arc. Um, the Art of Running Away. This is a middle grade book by Sabrina Kleckner and it is so cute. I do not read enough MG. I am going to work on that after the, uh, my adult phase coming up, but um, I absolutely adored this book. Maisie is so cute and so hilarious and her brother is the total opposite and they like, their scenes are so funny together. Callum is living with two roommates and like his roommates are fantastic like the whole thing I just I loved this book so much um, and the thing is that she's trying to save her parents art shop which her brother wants no part in so she's kind of having to do it on her own um, they have shipped her away from America over to um, the United Kingdom and so like um, you know she's an ocean away trying to deal with this and come up with something clever and so um, she yeah it's yeah, them getting to re-know each other because he had ran away when she was a kid and just like their relationship and then their bonding over things and it's just oh, such a good book. After that, I read Dial A for Aunties. I had heard so much about this from Jesse K. Sitano, Sitanto, and um, I wasn't sure what to expect. I don't really like murder mystery books or like murder books, period, <laughs> um, but it was so hilarious oh my gosh and when her mom sets her up on that dating website and starts having a conversation about eggplants and being thirsty and I was just like oh my god this is brilliant <laughs> like, um, 
And so, and then her ex in the book, um, I, I really liked him a lot. I did think, like, he, like, forgave her really fast, but, um, I love the whole antic the whole time. Um, so she, you know, accidentally killed someone, but it turns out, like, yeah, I guess that's a spoiler, so I'll just, <laughs> um, but her aunts help her hide the fact that she might have killed someone. And they have this wedding event to go to, and they have the body over there, and it's this whole fiasco of trying to hide the body, and then, like, putting it somewhere so it's just like randomly found or something and like yeah it's it's a hot mess um all the aunties I like they all had different personalities that were really fun and just getting into that like seeing that culture and the pressures of like having to stay close to home instead of like spreading your wings and flying like all of that was really nice and I'm glad that her ex came back home so that they could start something again um because they were really cute too next i read the second book in the series the girl with the whispering shadows this was following the crowns of croswell that i read in that last video by de knight um this one kind of reminded me of like peter pan still a little bit harry potter um but this girl like seriously like book two in harry potter basically like instead of the snake it was this girl's shadow <laughs> doing something and like it's like taken over through a curse and like it was just like ugh, so many similarities but it's fine um and it also re reminded me of peter pan when his shadow gets loose and does the silly things but um it was it was a good next book uh it was my last arc they requested that i buy the next one to read <laughs> but um it was good to read it's always like pretty action-packed and face fast-paced um it's just different and it pulls on things that are familiar but um, it's got you know shifters and different uh, beings in this book at this school and um, the secret town gets exposed and like everything goes wonky as they fight off some forces so um, it's an interesting read again that one's like middle grade but with high schoolers like it doesn't it doesn't logistically make sense <laughs> Um, next I read Lake's Edge by Linda Clipstone. She is an Australian author and I really, again, with the whole I don't like murder, I don't really like dark books. Um, this one reminded me so much, not like so much in a, you know, in a good way, to, um, by Kyla Pannon, Stalking Shadows with the sisters I talked about before. It was like a Beauty and the Beast retelling. Um, Lake's Edge, I've heard, was supposed to kind of be a Beauty and the Beast retelling because the boy is like a monster boy, um, but it definitely still reminded me of uh, Persephone and Hades because um, she also can speak with and see the Lord of, I mean, he's called Lord Under, but, you know, Lord of the Underworld, um, and she always sacrifices pomegranates to see him. And so I was like, yes, is Persephone a little bit? Like, um, she goes to his world and, like, they always are bargaining. And I was waiting for her to bargain, like, six months of her life or whatever down in the underworld. But um, I did not know that it was, uh, like, going to have a sequel. And so when I was reading to the end, I was like, what is happening? Like, you never know who to trust, what's going on. Her and Monster Boy have very uh, selfish selfless I don't know they put themselves in harm's way to protect everyone else at the risk and fault of everyone else and um so they both kept bungling things up for each other and then here's Lord Under doing his shady stuff and you don't know whether to like him or trust him or not and um Clipstone like really toes the line on all of that so it's interesting uh the unfolding of all that mystery is interesting the um like magic in a world that she built like ugh, with the corruption and just like the lake it's so so creepy so gothic creepy <laughs> like if that's your thing um i it was a really good read how it ended i was just like oh god is she being helped or not <laughs> so i can't wait for book two to read that as well so put that on your goodreads um any of these arcs that i talked about put them on your goodreads um but yeah that's pretty much all I read. I think I gave everyone like really good stars. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was my May slash June. Oh no, no. I'm currently reading. Oh my goodness. I can't believe I forgot this. Currently reading When You Get the Chance by Emma Lord, a Mamma Mia retelling. And I am so excited. I'm only halfway through. I wanted to finish before I made this video, but you know, when you need a video up next week or today, <laughs> um, you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, so far, I'm loving when you get the chance. It's about this girl, Millie, who's with her dad, and she got dropped off 
um, as a baby with him and she's having to find out her three moms that she found in his live journal. It's not a lot to go on but somehow they're all miraculously like five miles away from her <laughs> and then when he's like oh, I don't know where she ended up and it's like she's down the road dude. Um, and so she's trying to figure out who's her mom. I'm wondering if it's going to end the same as Mama Mia does where it like doesn't matter and you're all my moms and whatever um, which would be fine but um, so far she has mentioned Big League Burger which was um, a joint in tweet cute that she wrote and so I thought that was so cool that she tied these worlds together um, it's definitely like um, enemies to lovers and like they have and they their beef like she did what their beef was about and to me it was pretty like minimal but I guess for their personalities they just like exploded it um, so they're starting to soften towards each other now that I'm reaching the halfway point and I can't wait to finish this book and see what happens Millie is trying to be a quadruple threat um, really like right now she's a, a two threat well, I don't know duple <laughs> double threat um, and kind of she wants to be a triple threat she's working on her dancing um, she's doing musical, she wants to be on Broadway, and um, it's a lot of Broadway re references, which is really fun, a lot of um, songs references and um, Mamma Mia references, which I love, so definitely try to get an arc of that. I was ecstatic that I got picked for that, because bigger ones I kind of get turned down for, and even just like random ones, like maybe they meet their quota, but I was just like over the moon that I got this one, so, so excited! If y'all have a net galley or the... Edelweiss, Vice, whatever, um, let me know what arcs y'all are picking or what you've just read recently in June for Pride Month especially. Have you read any particularly Pride books? Um, and yeah, that's it. I will catch y'all in another video. Um, the next one I will probably just be my July Nano stuff, working on my adult novels. So um, until then, uh, happy writing, happy reading, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye!